morning, church. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Let's stand together and let's worship him this morning.
voice. a big shout if our God is worthy you're worthy Lord it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord today and you know what there's we if you have problems and if you have burdens you can always cast them on the Lord Psalms 55 says if you cast your cares upon the Lord he shall renew you and he shall keep you and Lord have mercy. I'm losing my words because so, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. He shall sustain you. But he'll never leave the righteous forsaken. We try to go upon our own will, but if we cast our cares upon the Lord, he'll always keep us. In other words, he has never lost a battle. Who believes that? Who is grateful for that? Our God is so good. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for protecting us. Lord, we cast all of our cares, all of our problems, anything that we cannot control, Lord, it's on you, Lord, because we know you will never fail us. And we thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing. Every, he keeps 
As he made a way for you. Sing it out. Always making a way. Come on. He's always making a way. Come on. I God never felt. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't leave you. No. was against the wall but the Lord never failed me the Lord always kept me he won't leave you no he won't fail one more time he won't fail he won't fail he won't leave you no he won't fail one more time I've still got joy in chaos. 
I've got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful in every season So No, he won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. No, 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 no. He won't. Oh, he won't. He won't fail.
when friends found us. He won't fail. When family found us. He won't when finances found us. When my own will found me. You have never found me. One more time. He won't fail. God a praise if he never failed, failed you give God a praise Lord thank you for never failing us thank you for always keeping us bless God we can take a moment and greet somebody tell somebody you love them greet your neighbor Good morning, Fall Line. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We have a family coming up for a baby dedication that we might know this morning. Good morning to you all. We're glad you're here. Amen. Praise God. My name is Steve Sawyer. They call me Pastor Steve. I'm not the lead pastor here. Uh, our lead pastor's out doing a wedding today. So bless them. I saw a picture with toes and sand in the same picture. That's always good. Amen. Amen. We're just glad you're here. I'm going to invite them up. Where's Don and John? Y'all want to come? Come on up. Okay. All right, all right. A lot of you know this family right here. When I tell you and when I sing that God is good, I'm saying God is good. This morning, Debbie and I have the joy of being able to dedicate our grandbaby, our granddaughter, Natalie Rose Layman. She is adorable times a thousand. This is our daughter, Rachel, a daughter of the house, and our very fine son-in-law that we're very thankful for, Ryan. Oh, come on, let's make him welcome. And this is little Natalie Rose. Hey, Natalie. Hey, girl. <laughs> she is taking it in. <laughs> so praise God. The precedent for dedicating children is more than one place in the Bible, but we always look to Luke chapter 2, where Mary and Joseph came and presented Jesus. And there are four things they did that day, and that's going to sort of outline the next few minutes together. First of all, they presented their baby to Jesus, which is what we're doing today. And what this speaks of is that she's not yours. <laughs> she's on loan. And believe me, I know that personally. Because a few years ago, I said, God said, she's not yours. She's on loan. And it's your call by God to steward this little girl. And then they gave thanks. Simeon took him and he gave thanks. And so we're going to give thanks to God from the bottom of our hearts. She's just seeing people and having her own little church here this morning. <laughs> so we're going to give God thanks. Then Simeon spoke a biblical, don't upstage me, girl. <laughs> what was I talking about? Then he, then, he, then he spoke biblical purpose. I can say that we know that you have a purpose, Natalie Rose, and that's why you're here. And it's a grand purpose. I don't say this to say that I'm prophesying. All I know is that the word that came to me this morning 
in my heart. She wants to have it. Just a second. Is discover. I believe you're going to be a discoverer. I don't mean you're going to, you may discover, who knows, you may discover something that changes the world. But I believe, I believe she's going to have a life of discovery. And then they spoke a blessing. Baby dedication is more about dedicating us as parents, as church, even though you live in another city, have another church. But anyway, do you promise today to do all you can in your power to give her the word of God and the love of a family and all that she needs? Amen. We as your family, your aunt and uncle who wouldn't come up because they're taking pictures, and all your extended family, we pledge to do the same. We as your hometown church, place to do the same. Amen. Now y'all know why I go missing sometimes. Amen. So Debbie, if you'll open this. Oh, she won't see. So Lord, today, we present Natalie Rose Lehman to you as a gift from you on loan to this family. And we thank you for her so much from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you for the life that she is, for the joy that she's already brought and the joy that she will bring. We thank you, Lord, for the joy of seeing her discover life every day. And we pray that that discovering heart will remain her whole entire life. Lord, only you know the totality of her purpose, but we agree today that she will fulfill her purpose in life. Amen? She will fulfill her purpose in life. Now, you want Nona? She will fulfill, <laughs> I'm on a clock. She will fulfill her purpose in life. Amen? Do you agree with me, church? She will, and she will find it, and she will fulfill it. And... We speak a blessing over her in Jesus' name, representing the oil of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we bless this child in Jesus' name, and we pray your blessing over her her entire life in Jesus' name. We pray your favor over her, your protection, your guidance. We call her a daughter of the Lord, a handmaiden of the Lord. Lord, we believe she'll be above and not beneath, the head and not the tail. We believe she'll be blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed in the city, blessed in the country too. We believe she will have a heart toward you and a heart of faith and a heart of love and a heart of discovery. She will make a difference in her world, and we thank you for it. We pray for her future. We speak health over her, emotional health, spiritual health, and physical health in the name of Jesus. And I'm being very presumptuous, but there might be a little guy already born out there that someday she will choose and we pray for him today in Jesus name and because I prayed for this guy a long time before I knew him amen <laughs> and we just speak blessing over your life child you are so blessed and you will be blessed highly favored of the Lord and walking in God all his days thank you for your angels giving charge and protecting her and we dedicate her this day to you and thank you for it in Jesus name and all God's people said, amen. Lord, we lift up Ryan and Rachel, and we pray your wisdom over them, your provision. And Lord, just everything they need to raise Natalie, you have given them. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and the church said, amen, amen, amen. Love you, girl. Love you, Natalie. Let me take that. Dr. Lehman. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, brother. Well, we could go eat now. Amen. After the, anyway. <laughs> what a joy. God is so good. Amen. Well, again, a welcome to all of you at Fall Line, especially if this is your first time. Let's give it up for first time guests. Amen. We're so glad you're here. Hey, somewhere in your seat around you is this very important tool. It's called a Connect Card. Hey, we're an easy church. We're not going to bug you. Show up on your doorstep this afternoon. Uh, 
we're, and we're not going to sell your information and use it. We just want to know you. We want to know you were here. If this is your first time, please feel, give as much uh, information as you can about yourself. And we hope you feel free to give a lot because we will protect your information. We just want to pray for you. We want to get to know you. Right outside these doors here, there's an area called Next Steps. And when you leave today, if this is your first time guest, if you're a first time guest, we have a gift for you. And uh, so go by and get it and just introduce yourselves. It'll be easy, we promise. And, and even if you've been coming a long time, take a moment and fill out. There's a digital way to do it. There's a QR code online and on the screen. And you can do this online too. We welcome all of you who are watching online. And uh, so connect with us today. At the bottom of, the, of this connect card is a prayer request area. And we say every week, this is so important. If you'll give us your prayer request, we'll see to it that not only the pastoral team, all the elders, and also our prayer team will uh, be praying over your needs this week. At the end of the service, if I forget to mention it, there will be a prayer team on both sides of the rear part. There's a big word pray back there. There'll be some there. And at the big chalkboard back there, there'll be some folks back there too. So take advantage of that. Uh, sign up for VBS. It's coming in June. And just before we go to God's Word, I want to thank you for the way that you give so faithfully uh, here so that we can do what we're called to do. At Fall Line, we're all about uh, building family, building community, and transforming lives through the message and the love of Jesus Christ. Only possible because you're obedient to God in giving. There's so many ways you can give. One would certainly fit you. You can text to give. There are boxes on the back wall and in the lobby that you can insert your both your connect card and your your offering uh, so many ways to give find the way that fits you if you haven't begun to give begin today we promise you'll be making a difference in the world and god will bless you for it amen can we pray before we go to the word lord thank you for everything that's happened you are indeed so good we love you so much now as we come to your word Lord, we pray that you would open our eyes and open our ears. Lord, I humble myself before you. Use me as your servant to bring forth your word and that it will make a difference in our lives. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, 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 amen. In just a few minutes, we're going to be honoring graduates. So if you're here for that, we haven't forgotten you. In fact, I've been instructed, and I need to do a a, uh, a shorter message today. So how many of y'all got faith today? How many of you believe I can bring a word that changes your life in 25 minutes? Praise God. That's great faith right there. Amen. Amen. So start the clock. Listen quick. And I'll speak quick, okay? We're in a series called Greatest Hits. Everybody say Greatest Hits. And what Greatest Hits is the great Bible stories. You know, the one, most of the ones you know about. Two things we want to do is, one, make sure you do know, because some people don't know even the great Bible stories. And then we want to, you'd also know that these aren't just stories, but they have life-changing power in them. Amen. So if you'll open up your heart and not just get distracted by a heartwarming story today, uh, it could change your life and will change your life today. I have the joy today of speaking about one of my favorite stories, one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible, and it is the story of Ruth. Are y'all with me? Amen. It's the eighth book of the Old Testament. We're not going to read it. I'm actually going to tell you the story. Uh, and so, but I invite you to read it sometime. It's very short. It's only 85 verses long. You can read it in 10 or 15 minutes. But it is a beautiful story. We'll put a verse up that kind of sets the context for it and the season it was in. Judges 17, 6 says that, in those days, there was no king in Israel. It was the period of the judges. And everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And how many of you think that worked out good? <laughs> I mean, we could spend the rest of the time talking about the chaos, the violence, the, uh, just the craziness, the plague, the famine. You know, just the kind of stuff you see when you read the news every day now. <laughs> because we still tend to be people without a king who do what is right in our own eyes. And guess what, folks? The results of that have never changed. It still gets the same result. When you have no, oh, I'm preaching good already. When you have no king in your life and you're just doing what's right in your own eyes, it gets the same result it got these guys back in the period of Judges. 
So maybe we can do something about that this morning. So the story goes like this. And each, each, each chapter has a theme. There are four major themes in the book. And each chapter kind of touches on one. So I'm going to give you some chapter headings I made up. Draw attention to a theme for you note takers in our app. The notes are in there. And I would hate to mess your whole week up by leaving any of those blanks out. So if I leave any out, you can actually find them online. Or you can find me or, or email Vivian at Fall Line Church. <laughs> Or any complaints about the message, Vivian and Fall Line Church. Uh, but anyway, so chapter one, I've entitled, Just When You Thought It Couldn't Get Any Worse. And the theme that you'll see in, in, as we go through this is, is, is God's, God's steadfast, loyal love. How much he truly loves us. I've taught you so many times a Hebrew word, hased. Everybody say hased. In your Bible, when you're reading the Old Testament and you read steadfast love, loving kindness and tender mercies, it's always this word has said. It's undefinable. It's God kind of love. It is a loyal love. It's aggressive love. It's a covenant love. It's a loyal love. It's a pursuing love. Uh, it's the God kind of love. It's a love that never gives up. It's a love that persists. It's a love that pursues and so it's the God, it's not the kind of love like you may have ever even thought about in the natural world. It's a, it's a, it's a strong, strong love. So that's the theme. Here we go with the story. So the story opens in the old little town of Bethlehem with a couple. His name is Elimelech. Her name is Naomi. There's a famine in the land. Why? Because there were no king and everybody's doing what was right in their own eyes. And so to escape the famine, Elimelech decided to take his family and leave Judah, the promised land, go across the border a few miles into Moab. Now, you people that study your Bible, you think, what? I mean, probably an ill-advised decision. Moab was immortal enemies. It was a godless, perverted culture. I'll tell you who Moab was if you read your Bible every day because that's what we do. Uh, when, you run, when Lot had an ancestral relationship with his daughters, the offspring of that was Moab. So you can imagine the culture that came out of that. So I know times were hard in Bethlehem, but somehow Elimelech thought it'd be better if they'd go over into Moab and wait it out. It didn't turn out well for him. They had two sons. So he took his wife and two sons to Moab. We don't know the chronology or how long it took, but pretty soon Elimelech himself died. The two sons married Moabite women, and before long, both of them died. And so you see this picture. You have two Moabite widows and one older Hebrew widow, a long ways from home. And listen, being a widow in the ancient world, even ancient Israel, was a status that at times just bordered on despair. Uh, and and so, uh, so here we have three widows in a foreign land, and it's just really a very hard situation. Naomi uh, was very bitter. In fact, Naomi changed her name. She said, don't call me Naomi any longer because Naomi means pleasant and I'm just ain't going to be pleasant no more. <laughs> call me Mara, which means bitter. She said, because God has been bitter to me. Because she was, she was mad at Elimelech, that fool for bringing her over here and dying. And she was mad at God for letting it happen. And if I could just take a moment here, a moment and just say, there may be a, somebody here today and that's right where you are. There may be a bitterness in you. Maybe a bitterness at someone who hurts you like a lemon like hurt Naomi or, or maybe even bitter at God. And can I just say, take hold of God's hand today. Take hold of Naomi's hand. And, and if that's you, you stay close to Naomi in this story, okay? Because Naomi wants to help you this morning. Naomi heard that there was bread again back in Bethlehem, so she packed her bags and was going to head home. The two girls, they went with her. They got a ways down the road, and Naomi's thinking about this. You know what? I mean, it's tough in Israel being a widow, but being a foreign widow, are you kidding me? Moabite widows? And so she stops, and she said, girls, listen, I know you love me, and I love you, but y'all need to go home. Go back to your old life. Go back to your mama. Go back to your gods. Go back and find a husband there. I got nothing for you. The only thing I've got to offer you is God, and he's done hurt me. You know what I'm saying? So go back to everything. There's another thing to this book. Listen, can I just say it? I don't have much time. Listen, nothing with God beats everything without God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so just remember that. That's another sermon. 
But everything, everything in your life is back there. So go back. And so after some, some back and forth, one of the girls, Orpah, not Oprah, but Orpah, Orpah, or either they spelled it wrong in the Bible, I'm not sure. But anyway, Orpah decided to go back. But Ruth clung to Naomi. And Ruth said, and, and Ruth said, I mean, oh, Naomi said, Ruth, go quickly. You can still catch your sister-in-law. Go back. Everything's back there. And, and, and Ruth responded with what is recorded in Ruth chapter 1. I mean, we have verse 16 and 17 with, listen, the most life-changing conversion declaration that you could ever say. And I want you to grab this because this, this is the kind of conversion. Everybody say conversion. See, that's what God is after, a conversion, to convert your life, to change your life. Ruth spoke life-converting words when she said this. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. There ain't no, well, I think I'll just go with you too, that is it. And there doesn't need to be, well, I think I'll just go to church in you either. Come on now. There doesn't need to be any, well, I think I'll give God a try. No, there needs to be this kind of moment in you. Has there ever been this moment of conversion in your life where you decide that everything without God is not as good as nothing with God? So I'm going to lay everything down, and I'm going to choose God. And I'm going to, his people are going to be my people. Hey, y'all my people this morning. His people will be my people. His father be my father. God will be my God. And only death will ever change that. That's the kind of thing it takes. And that is the loyal. What, what Ruth is beginning to show is something that Boaz is going to bring out in the next few chapters. Is that she's got that kind of loyal love to Naomi. There's a picture of that right there. It's that loyal. That's, that, that, those, that statement Ruth made to Naomi is a picture of that loyal love I was telling you about right there. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. That's the loyal love of God. Somehow or another, this little Moabite girl has already somehow or another caught on to a revelation of God that's put a God kind of love and loyalty in her. And that's the kind of love and loyalty we need this morning. Amen? And so... Uh, God introduced this in Exodus 26, if you'd put it up. This is the first time God uses the word. He said, I'm show, I'll show love to a thousand generations of those. There, there's the spirit of this kind of love. Not just to you, but to a thousand generations of those who will love me and keep my commandments. I'll bless your family to a thousand generations if you'll walk to me. That's how big my love is. Amen, 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 amen. So the theme of chapter one is he loves us. Oh, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Amen. Think I'll write a worship song. Amen. Then we go to chapter two. I've entitled chapter two, Girl Meets Boy, or Despair Meets Hope. And the theme is he, the providence of God. We've seen the love of God. Now we're going to see the providence of God. Little Natalie, we dedicated a few moments ago. God has already has providence for her. The, the word providence means timely preparation for a future eventuality. There were no eventualities in Natalie. She's 17 months old. There are all, the 99% of her life's in front of her. There's a lot of eventualities coming her way. Would you agree? God has made a provision for every single one of her. She needs to walk in that. And my faith is that she will. So uh, they head back to Israel, two widows. They settle in. Uh, again, the state of a widow, no income, no nothing. Uh, and so they basically get hungry. Their stomachs are empty. Their cupboards are empty. And Ruth, not being one to sit and watch Oprah while she's hungry, come on. She, she says to her mother-in-law, she said, you know what? I think I'm going to go gleaning. Everybody say gleaning. You don't know what gleaning is. Gleaning, picking, it, she's referring to, again, a law that God, a mercy law that God put into the law, into the culture of, of Israel. And, and here's, what, here's, here's the law quickly. 
God told the farmers in Israel, said, I'm on, I want you to do two, three things. He said, first of all, I, I, don't, I don't want you to harvest your crop all the way into the corners and to the edges. I want you to leave the corners and the edges. And I don't want you to go over the field twice. Just go over it once. And whatever you drop, don't go back and pick it up. Why? Because I want to leave that for the poor and the marginalized and the foreign and the widow so that they can come and glean or pick up. But you got to realize that morning, Ruth is basically saying, I'm going to go down to the food pantry. I'm going to go to the one source of charity that's in the community. So she humbled herself. And she said, I'm just going to go pick on the field. And she and she's just so happened. Everybody say, just so happened. <laughs> See, Ruth is a book of just so happens that, how many of you know, never just so happens? Why? Because God is a God of providence. God already has your life mapped out. He knows your eventualities. He's already made providence for it. If you'll walk with him now, if you'll walk with him, all right? And so she begins to glean in a field, enter Boaz. I really think they should have named the book Boaz, you know. But you know why I wish they had of? Because you can't preach Ruth at a men's conference. <laughs> Y'all women have men's conferences, and you get you a pink program, and you say, our theme is Ruth. How many men would come out to a men's conference with a pink program titled Ruth? They should name it Boaz. How to get the godly hot chick. Come on now, amen. And the theme would be get a job in Jesus. Come on, I'm preaching good, amen. You get you a job in Jesus and excel at both of them like Boaz did, you might get the hot godly chick. Oh, hot. Did I say that? Can you say that? I don't know if she is hot. I reckon she was. <laughs> Boaz drove up. Can I bring, I love, when I preach this, you know, if you've been around me, I like to bring it up to modern times, can I? Boaz drives up. This is the way I see him. He drives up in his 2023 GMC Sierra Denali with full grain leather seats, 12 points surround sound, 22 inch polished wheels. Got a blue tick hound dog hanging his head out the window. He gets out of his truck. He, he says, the Lord bless you guys. And they said, the Lord bless you, boss. And then he turned around. He said, whoa, it's in the Bible. Whose woman is that? <laughs> and they said, that's that woman Naomi brought back from Moab. And so Boaz walked out there to where Ruth was. And I don't know. It's the way I see it. I wish I had me an Everhart cap right now and a straw in my, you know, I started to do that. He walked out there and he, he said, hey. <laughs> she said, hey to you. He said, I just want you to know you can glean in my field anytime, sweetheart. Come on now, amen. <laughs> he said, in fact, what are you doing back here? He said, don't you even be looking for another man's field. This is your field. He said, in fact, why don't you come on up against, amongst my girls that are working up here? Don't be out here by yourself. And if you need any water, there's some on my truck. Help yourself. Come on, amen. In fact, I brought lunch for everybody. You hungry? <laughs> what are we seeing now? What are we see, see, you just went back to that heartwarming story, but don't miss the providence of God in your life. This is what God wants to do in your life. She was in hard times. She was hungry. And, you know, she probably wasn't too decked out either. Some of y'all worried if y'all don't look just right when y'all meet that man, it ain't going to happen. But what you reckon she looked like after a hard day of work? She probably had her hair back in some kind of weird way, dirt all over her nose. Probably didn't smell too pretty. Come on now, amen. And Boaz walks in their life. He says, so come up and they have lunch together. And, uh, uh, you know, not only does he give her lunch, he said, oh, come on. It's all, it's all in the Bible. Read the story. Come dip, dip you. I, we got some oil and vinegar up here from Carabas. Dip your bread in it. Come on up here. Then, and when they got through eating, you know what he did? He said, let's take your mom-in-law. Here, let's pack her a to-go lunch from Carabas. And he gave it. said, take that home to your mama. When lunch was over, he turned to his foreman. He said, watch out for this girl. Don't let anyone embarrass them. Don't let any of them dudes get their hand on her. Don't let anybody make fun of her. In fact, why don't you accidentally on purpose drop a little bit more? Bottom line is, Ruth goes home that evening. She's got a sack of seed and barley that would represent a month of food. She's got Carabba's take home. She walks in the door, and Naomi's eyes get wide. 
She goes, whose field did you glean in today? She said, I don't know, some guy named Boaz. And think Jewish mama right here. Naomi goes, oh, Boaz. Boaz is a good boy, Ruth. This is a good field, Ruth. You should glean in this field, Ruth. Because Boaz is kin to us. Boaz is, listen, a kinsman redeemer. See, God had another mercy law. And that law was that if someone died like uh, Naomi's husband and, 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 and Ruth and, and without anyone, any way to hold their, their legacy and their land and, their, and their, their livelihood, that the nearest of kin would take over and take the responsibility, even marry them and give them offspring. And said, so he's a kinsman redeemer. You glean in this field. And so she did. All that, heart, that season, they ate well, probably put on a little weight, amen, probably, which they probably needed to. And that's chapter 2, Providence. Help me, Lord, to finish this. Chapter 3, he said, he said yes. The, the theme is redemption. Redemption. He redeems us. Harvest season is over. You know, what are we going to do now? Naomi is... Jewish mama instincts kicks in again. She says, hey, listen, we got to do something. Here's a plan. I know tonight Boaz has rented the threshing floor. It's payday. Harvest season's over. He's going to hand out checks. They're going to eat too much, drink too much. I know he'll spend the night there. I want you to go take a bath, put on your hottest out. Best, excuse me. Got to get this at work. <laughs> I'm bringing some flesh into the scripture here. Put on your best outfit. Put some of that fragrance on. And go down there and do exactly what I tell you. And she told her what to do. So, so Ruth did. She went down to the threshing floor, watched all the festivities from the shadows. It was all over. Boaz was happy, paid his guys, you know, went over, was tired, hungry, you know, laid down, pulled the cover up, and he's gently snoring. And she comes over there, and she boldly, on the border of inappropriately, and went and laid down beside him took his covers and uncovered his feet. Some people said that was symbolic of marry me. I think she was just wanting to wake him up. <laughs> Maybe. And so she lay there a few minutes. It wasn't but a few minutes. He like woke with a startle, saw somebody there. He said, who's there? And then she said this. She said, I am your servant, Ruth. Spread your garment over me since you are a kinsman redeemer. Woo, that's sexy right there, isn't it? Amen. Hey, spread your garment over me. What she, you know what she's doing? She's basically appealing to that law. It's called the Leveret Law. She's basically boldly. Sometimes you just got to be crazy for 30 seconds. Amen? <laughs> Sometimes you just got to be crazy enough for 37 to do something you wouldn't do any other time in your whole life, like ask Boaz to marry you. But that's what she did. She asked Boaz to marry her, and he understood it, and he responded. He could have, like, thrown her out. He could have called guards or whatever. But he said, bless you, daughter. Now you are showing kindness. There's that word. Has said, love. Now you're showing it to me. You could have gone after the younger men, yet you came to me. I will do what you ask. There's only, so he says, okay, I will. There's only one problem, though. Between you and me, there's a guy nearer kin than I am. He's got first rights to this land and to this deal. He said, but don't you worry about it. I'll take care of it in the morning. You just lay here all night. What you? <laughs> we got tonight, babe. Why don't you stay? Now they were godly people. The Bible says so. So I'm sure not much. I mean, nothing happened. He said, "Stay here. Just be gone before daylight." The Bible's. If you knew how good the Bible was, you'd read it every day. He said, "Just be gone before daylight. Don't let anybody see you. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll take care of it." And that ends chapter 3. And then chapter 4. So is restoration. We've seen loyal love. We've seen providence. We've seen redemption. He redeems us, by the way, number 3. And number 4, he restores everything. That's what God wants to do in your life. Restore everything you've lost. He wants to restore everything you lost. Next morning, Boaz goes to the public square. And uh, waits for the guy to come. He says, hey, hey, friend, come over here. I want to talk to you, cousin. And he says, uh, hey, you know, uh, Elimelech died, and he left uh, uh, 
property and uh, you have first right to it, I suggest you do something with it. He's a shrewd negotiator. And the guy said, I believe I will. And Boaz says, well, that's a good decision. I think you'll be glad you did. And he said, oh, yeah, I almost forgot. It comes with two widows. And you got to bring them into your inheritance and into your family. And the guy goes, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. I'm not going to let my inheritance and with, that goes to my children from my, how many of you know that my, my attitude to get you in trouble every time? And I think maybe he hadn't seen Ruth. But anyway, he said, I'm not going to let my estate be messed up like that. He said, if you want, you can have them. And Boaz said, well, I believe we will. <laughs> so Boaz did. And I got to finish the story because we got to close. So Boaz, Boaz did. He married Ruth. And before long, they had a child. And they named the child. Actually, you know who loved the child more than anybody? Naomi. Guess who wasn't bitter anymore? Guess who all of a sudden got pleasant again? The neighbors called Boaz's and Ruth's baby, Naomi's baby. But it wasn't Naomi's baby. They named him Obed. And Obed grew up and had a son named him Jesse. And Jesse grew up and had a son named him David. And David became the king of Israel. And just as Boaz had taken care of the legacy and the land and the livelihood of these widows, David took care of the legacy and the land and the livelihood of an old nation. But it didn't even stop there. David had a child who had a child who had a child, and unto us a child was born in Bethlehem, in Bethlehem, whose name was Jesus, who eternally wants to take care of you today and wants to be your Boaz today, if you'll let him, if you'll let him. Amen? You've got a choice. Is there a king in your life, or are you just continuing to do what is right in your own eyes? That's the question you've got to ask today. Is there a king? You have a choice. Hey, listen, Orpah chose wrong. She just decided to go back to her own life and her old way of living. Ruth chose right. I noticed one day when I was studying this, that how, many, how many girls were there? Two. How many kinsmen redeemer had God provided in Judah? Yeah, come on now. Two. There were two girls. Two kinsmen redeemers. Orpah had her providence ahead of her too and could have walked in it as surely as Ruth. She reminds me of the, of the young man that met Jesus. And Jesus said, just go get rid of everything you have and follow me because everything without me is never going to match up to nothing with me because I'll give you everything back plus. But the guy couldn't see it. And he walked away, much to Jesus' sadness. And that's exactly what Orpah did today. And it's exactly what somebody here might be in danger of doing. And I'm pleading with you. Is there a king in your life? Is Jesus king of your life? And have you quit doing things just the way you think is right? Because the wisdom of God's word says there's a way that seems right to you. But the end of that way is your death. It's not providence. It's not loyal love. It's not redemption. It's not restoration of all that you've lost. Orpah walks off into oblivion. We never hear from her again. Ruth walked into the history books. She walked into blessing. She walked into love. She walked into redemption. She walked into restoration. She walked into life. God said, I've come that Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundant. That's Boaz talking to Ruth. That's Jesus talking to you. Jesus then drove up in his 2023 Denali this morning. Come on, amen. <laughs> and he stepped out of the truck, and he's looking across this field, and he says, whose are you? That's the question. Whose are you? And there's only one of two answers. You're his, or you, you're, you're your own, you think. But biblically, I hate to say it, biblically, you are either of your father God or of your father the devil. You don't know it. You don't realize it. There's two vying for you. Man, don't let the bad one win. In your quest to be your own king and do what's right in your own eyes. Pray a prayer today that sounds like Ruth's prayer. Where you go, God. In fact, let's pray it right now. Listen, if you've never prayed that prayer, pray it right now. Make a decision. 
your life right now may seem like it's all together, but I promise there are eventualities coming that where you're going to need Jesus. And he's already made provision. Don't be Orpah. Don't go your own way. Say yes to Jesus today. Because this story is not really about Boaz. It's about Jesus. And so just pray a prayer like this. Jesus, I will follow you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lead me, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. I turn away from my old life where everything I have, I lay aside. And I turn to you, only you. And I say, be my kinsman redeemer, which he is. He's your redeemer. He died on a cross to pay the price to marry you and to give you life and livelihood and legacy and purpose and provision. He died for it all, but the choice is yours. Choose well. Choose him today and make him Lord. If you'll just pray a simple prayer of choosing him and making him Lord, he'll come into your heart, write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you'll be on your way to the life God has for you beginning today. And all God's people said, amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, if you prayed a prayer of decision today, let us know on this card. Take the card by the next steps. Uh, we'll have a devotional to give you that we prepared ourselves for you, for new believers. We have a, a devotion that we prepared for new believers, ourselves, produced for you. We want to give it to you today. Tell somebody. There'll be some leaders back there. Go back and introduce yourself and say, all you got to do is say, hey, I prayed the prayer. Hand them to say, I prayed the prayer. And that's all you got to be able to say. Amen, 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 amen. Well, I'm going to turn the service over now to Dr. Vivian Porter. Oh, there you are. And she's going to come, and we're going to take just a few minutes to honor graduates, and then we'll close our service. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Is it afternoon or morning? Good morning, everybody. And uh, it is, again, my privilege to be able to present to you the graduates for 2023 who are a part of Fall Line Church. And I love to do this because it gives me such a wonderful opportunity to uh, share with you and then I get to hear the length of their journey and everything they go through. You know, in a graduation, they call your name, you walk across the stage and that's all you hear. But we get to share a little bit more about what their journey is like and uh, even what their future is like. And so we have four here that we want to uh, uh, present and just present to you. The first one is Jonathan Moore. Yay, come on, son of the house. <laughs> Graduated from Georgia State University with dual bachelor's degrees, one in computer science and the other in film and television. Uh, in August, he will receive certifications in production and post-production at Georgia Film Academy. While earning his degree, Jonathan ran the media, uh, uh, the media right here at, uh, at this church. He worked in that for uh, over four years. He also worked full-time at GSU's University Library for three years. And then he worked as an Apple Care Specialist at Apple Incorporated for three years. I'm tired already for you. <laughs> he is now rounding out an additional two years leading the tech bar at Morehouse School of Medicine in Atlanta, Georgia. His plans, Jonathan plans to scale his production ventures into the powerhouse company that he always dreamed of while growing up with his brothers. He intends to gain work experience in Georgia's uh, film industry, and he plans to further expand his technology skills. Jonathan is the firstborn son of Rachel and Johnny Moore and is a lifetime member here at Fall Line Church. <laughs> All right. Uh, next is Joshua Moore, who will graduate uh, from Rutland, I think, this year. He is... Get this, he is a 4.0, 4.0 GPA honor graduate, <laughs> ranked fourth in his class, fourth in his class. He is the 
student body a vice president. He recently received honors and recognitions for being a member of the National Honor Society, the Beta Club, the Student Council, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, DECA, National Technical Honor Society. He's just an average fall line kid. <laughs> and future business leaders of America. In addition, Joshua achieved star student status, having the highest SAT score in his school. <laughs> he received the Golden Eagle nomination for technology. Joshua also completed the Georgia Military College and Hutchins Dual Enrollment Programs. Throughout middle school and high school, Joshua played soccer and developed sportsmanship on and off the field, all the while keeping his grades at the top of his class, which positioned him to be awarded the title Scholar Athlete of the Year for the Bibb County School District. Joshua has also been a media volunteer here at Fall Line. He started with Pastor Gail, and we, we think it was about 10. Were you 10 years? I know he was still uh, uh, in, in the children's program. So it's about 10, uh, 9 or 10 years, and so he has been in media uh, that long here. Um, uh, Joshua plans to attend SCAD, Santa Ver uh, which is uh, Savannah College of Arts and Design, and he will be majoring in interactive media and game development. Joshua is the youngest son of Rachel and Johnny Moore. <laughs> uh, uh, next we have Bryce Pastor. There he is right there. Graduated magna cum laude from Fort Valley State University with a bachelor's in agricultural economics. He attended Fort Valley State on a full tuition FVSU Agricultural Scholarship. <laughs> Bryce will be relocating to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina for a job with the BASF Corporation. He is the oldest son of Prelvis and Sandra Pastor. <laughs> then we have Desmond Pastor. Is Desmond here? Okay, okay. Uh, he uh, graduated summa cum laude from uh, Albany State University with a bachelor's in computer, uh, I'm sorry, computer information systems. He attended Alabama State with a four-year full tuition academic excellence scholarship. He also received the President's Award from uh, Alabama State. Desmond will be relocated to Tampa, Florida and for his job with Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation. He is the youngest son of Previs and Sundra Pastor. Let's give them a hand. Amen. For all that they have done. All right. And let's just take time to, to pray uh, for them, just for all God has done. Lord, we just lift these young men up to you. And we just thank you that you have made them on purpose. You made them with purpose, and you made them for a purpose. Lord, this is just the beginning of what it is that you have for them. And we know that you are God who is faithful and that your covering is over them and that they will do what it is you have put in them to do, the talents, the abilities, all that you have put into uh, them, that they will uh, use that in order to carry out the vision and the purpose for which you created them, Lord God. And we just give you praise for all that you have done for them, Lord God, for the family, for the protection, for all that you have done in providing everything that they need. And we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, give them one more hand. You going to do it? All right, I'll do it. So, you parents of young children... Just bring them to fall line. This happens to all our kids just right here. Just bring your kid here. They'll end up like this. We're so proud of you guys. Amen. Praise God. Isn't God good? Amen, 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 amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the unfailing love of God the Father, 
the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you as once again we leave the safety of this sanctuary, go back out into the field that is our world, our life, making a difference, walking in God's fullness. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Prayer is available for you against the back wall. Go by Next Steps if you're a first-time guest or if you prayed the prayer, we have something to give you. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you next time, Lord willing.